number 10, here we have prayer reduces stress levels. Muslims teach that everything in our whole lives is planned by God and that you can only accept and believe in Him by His power. And this knowledge will help reduce stress and deal with personal and professional life situations that can often be just very stressful. Now, when Muslims pray, they're acknowledging that God is in charge, not them. Benefit at number nine is good physical activity. Muslims pray five times a day, or at least they're supposed to pray five times a day. But there is a specific way in which the prayer needs to be done, and it involves some physical activity. From bending their knees to prostrating the body, prayer in Islam is a very physical process. Each action of the prayer is great for blood circulation, as well as it really helps to mobilize your body parts. Also, this gives Muslims a sense of routine and helps them become active for the day and throughout their day. Especially starting that morning prayer, it's a good routine to just get going. Number eight, the benefit is it's beneficial for blood circulation. So the physical act of praying is known for improving blood circulation as well, which of course helps regulate your heart and it's definitely essential for your body in general. When you go into the sajda or the sujood form or the prostration form during prayer, it's a very beneficial position due to the circulation of blood in the head that it facilitates. Next up, prayer can make you happier. Now, this is according to a study conducted by Dr. Andrew Newberg, and the study said that praying regularly makes a person happier. The reason is that Muslims get motivated with a sense of peace and accomplishment knowing that he or she has done something that is pleasing to God. In this case, prayer. That act is pleasing to God. Also, in the study, Dr. Andrew Newberg, he states that praying increases the levels of dopamine in your brain, which makes an individual happier and more peaceful. The next benefit we're going to look at is when it comes to recovery from surgery. So many studies have found that prayers can help in quick surgical recovery, and it's often recognized that prayer helps with the healing of surgical scars quicker as compared to when you're not praying. It is speculated that this is due to the fact that when someone is praying, it relieves stress, which would then help with the quicker healing of their body. The benefit coming in at number five is prayer increases your lifespan. Okay, now this might come as a shock. It definitely came as a shock for me when I was doing the research and I found this one. But yeah, this is reportedly one of the benefits that comes from prayer in Islam. It is said that praying can possibly increase one's lifespan. Of course, there's a question just exactly how does prayer even do this? How does it make you live longer? How does it increase your lifespan? Well, it can be claimed that prayer does this by reducing one's cortisol or stress levels and improving the overall body's health by keeping someone active through physical exercise five times a day. And since prayer can help people live happy, active, and a healthy lifestyle, these factors would all together contribute to prolonging someone's lifespan. The next benefit we're going to look at at number four is the reduction of depression and anxiety. Now, there's countless individuals that have been told that when they're experiencing anxiety and depression that they should pray, you know? Some people don't think that prayer is a good response for mental health issues that you're dealing with. But according to a UK-based study published in the British Journal of Health Psychology, praying can reduce someone's risk of developing depression and anxiety. Hmm, pretty interesting. The benefit we're going to look at next at number three is a reduction of chronic diseases. Prayers are also a great way to help individuals with chronic diseases like ulcers and migraines, headaches, hypertension, and it said that it can help with people that have diabetes. Given the fact that many of these diseases can often be tied to internal stress as well as just overall lack of mental health and well-being, praying can actually help to alleviate these diseases. This is really due to the positive feeling that prayer gives someone. So yeah, that's another benefit. 
Moving on now to number two, prayer gives a positive view on life. If you believe in any religion, there's a common teaching within all of them. It's the concept of hope. It can definitely help to have a positive outlook on life because when someone believes that they are pleasing God, it leads them to deal with anything that pops up in life in a more positive way. So yeah, the belief in God and his plans can give hope in dealing with all the things that go wrong as well as it can give courage to do what's right because Islam teaches that this world is temporary. So hope for the life after is a very motivating thing for Muslims and having consistent prayer really helps keep that hope alive for them. We end up now with number one, prayer makes you a better person. Kind of tied into pretty much everything that I mentioned in this episode. But praying is a religious act where the ultimate aim is to please God. When a person prays, he or she automatically tries their best through their actions to become a better person. The actions taken are things like, you know, not lying, not hurting anyone, being nice and kind to people, and the list goes on. And all of these acts together are done in an effort to please God. So it's important to realize that every religion teaches people the basic core values, like I just mentioned, being nice, being kind, not lying, things like that. But in Islam, they say that consistent prayer really helps above all others to bring out these characteristics in a person. All right, starting at number 10, there's flexible timing. Now, so Muslims pray five times a day. Now, the timing for these prayers are set between before sunrise and in the late evening. Each prayer has a window that makes it easier for Muslims to pray. And this provides Muslims with a few hours to perform the prayer each and every single day. And obviously it's not encouraged to delay your prayers unless there's an emergency, but you know, there is a window that Muslims have. Next up at number nine, let's talk about shortening and combining the prayers. This was a new concept for me. Islam is a religion that has certain obligatory teachings like prayer, but there's some flexibility in the case of rare circumstances that may come up and combining and shortening prayers are done in certain circumstances because Muslims believe that it should not be a burden or be difficult to perform. And over in the Quran, Surah 2 verses 185, it says, the month of Ramadan is that in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. So whoever cites the new moon of the month, let him fast and whoever is ill or on a journey than an equal number of days. Allah intends for you ease and does not intend for you hardships and wants for you to complete the period and to glorify Allah that to which he has guided you and perhaps you will be grateful. So this is one of the passages that Muslims point to that say that no being a Muslim and praying and all your obligations to Allah shouldn't be a burden because Allah intends for things to be done with ease. Qibla comes in at number eight. So there are nearly two billion Muslims in the world and all of them are to face the city of Mecca when they perform their prayers. Now the Qibla is the direction towards the Kaaba in the sacred mosque in Mecca. Now this is done to instill a sense of unity among all Muslims around the world and also really helps to focus the heart towards the Kaaba which is the holiest site in all of Islam and now one thing to clarify though Muslims do not worship the Kaaba the Kaaba simply serves as a reference point for their prayers to God prayers in Islam also allow Muslims to recite the Quran each prayer consists of certain movements such as standing bowing and prostrating oneself and one of the most important aspects of prayer in Islam is the recitation of some part of the Quran from memory. And doing this, this allows Muslims to continue to be in touch with what they believe to be the word of God. It's also to be recited in a very beautiful and melodic manner, just in a way that sort of appeals to the emotion of the heart of someone that may be listening. For number six, let's look at a fact relating to the remembrance of God. If you love someone, they are always on your mind for the most part, right? You know, I just recently started a relationship and yeah, she's on my mind all the time. So this analogy is used with prayer in Islam. Prayer keeps Muslims in touch with God and it serves as a reminder of their creator 
And in the Quran, Surah 20, verses 13 to 14, there's a passage that says this, And I have chosen you, so listen to what is revealed to you. Indeed, I am Allah. There is no deity except me. So worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. Now, moving on to fact number five, Muslims believe that prayer keeps you in check. It's believed that someone who doesn't keep God in their remembrance never really reflects that in their actions and they won't feel an urge to repent. So on top of that, it's encouraged to pray in large congregations or groups. And in the Quran, Surah 29, verses 45, there's a passage that says this, Recite, O Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book and establish prayer. Indeed, prayer prohibits immorality and wrongdoing, and the remembrance of Allah is greater, and Allah knows that which you do. Also, did you know that prayer is tied to charity in Islam? The Quran, time and time again, links prayer to charity. So when a Muslim prays in a congregation several times a day, they get to know other worshipers. So this allows for people to just get to know like what other people are going through, if they need anything, or if they're even sick. Because if everybody prayed on their own, in their own house, chances are they won't even know what people are dealing with, as well as just being able to offer help to somebody is not gonna be as readily available. Over in the Quran, on Surah 2 verses 277, it says, Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish prayer and give zakah will have their reward with their Lord, and there will be no fearing concerning them, nor will they grieve. Watching before prayer is also an important thing to know. Generally, before praying, Muslims must perform a washing of their hands, face, and feet. And this washing is called ablution or wudu, and its purpose is to really ensure that a Muslim is physically pure before standing in the presence of God. Also, the ablution is a reminder of one's need to be spiritually pure. So there's like a double-sided purpose in here. And over in the Hadith, you're gonna find a passage of the Prophet Muhammad that says this. When a Muslim washes his face for prayer, every sin he has committed with his eyes is washed away from his face along with the water or with the last drop of water when he washes his hands. Every sin they wrought is erased from his hands with the water or with the last drop of water and when he washes his feet every sin towards which his feet walked is washed away with water or with the last drop of water with the results that he comes out cleansed of all his sins and that's according to the Sahih Muslim Hadith spiritual cleansing another component of prayer in the religion of Islam I did allude to it but the Prophet Muhammad he summarized this point in the Hadith when he said the these words. If a person had a stream outside his door and bathed in it five times a day, do you think he would have any filth left on him? The people said no filth would remain on him whatsoever. And the Prophet Muhammad then said, that is like the five daily prayers. Allah wipes away the sins by them. So I know I did allude to the point of being spiritually pure, but this statement right here really provides another angle to look at that. Now let's end off this video with number one. And speaking of ending, that's what we're gonna talk about, the ending of the prayer. It ends with peace. Each prayer ends with a statement that means peace be upon you. The word salah in Arabic comes from the root word sila, which means to connect. And what this does, it literally interrupts a person's day in order that they disconnect from the world and connect with God, as well as thoughts of the hereafter. So on number 10, we have a prayer for health. So health is considered to be one of the biggest blessings from the Almighty Allah. It would be hard to live your day-to-day -day life without feeling well, especially if you have to pray, eat, or work, or even sleeping can be a pain sometimes. Muslims look for health and power from Allah. A dua, which is a prayer to help against every disease, is Surah Fatiha. So Surah Fatiha is also known as Surah Shifa. Surah Fatiha is actually one of the most beloved and well-known surahs in the Quran. So in fact, Muslims recite Surah Fatiha multiple times during their daily salah. Salah means prayer. 
And it's also recited for many occasions, such as a source of comfort or if somebody passes away. So number nine, we have a prayer to make you a better, a righteous person. So all Muslims believe that after everyone dies, everyone will be gathering on the day of judgment in front of Allah with all their good and bad deeds that they've done in their life. Everyone wants to better themselves so they can be somebody who deserves to go to heaven. But going to heaven is not an easy task. So in the Quran, there is a text, uh, Surah 7 verse 47, and it says, Place us not among the people who have been guilty of evil doing. So this dua or prayer is recited continuously asking Allah to make you among the righteous person or to help you better yourself. So on number eight, we have a prayer to strengthening your Iman. So Iman is a Islamic word for a believer's faith. So strengthening one's Iman would mean that strengthening one's faith in Islam. As we all know, despite what religion it is, this world is filled with temptations and things that are prohibited in Islam, but as well as other religion. In the Quran, Surah 3 verse 8, it says, let not our hearts deviate from the truth after you have guided us and bestow upon us mercy from your grace. Verily, you are the giver of bounties without measure. So this is a powerful prayer where Muslims seek Allah's help to protect their faith in Islam. On number seven, we're going to be talking about a prayer for strength when facing hardships. So in Islam, it is believed that it's important to understand that every hardship that Muslims face in this life is a test from the Almighty Allah. So everyone goes through something whether they are Muslims or not, which can get very difficult and may seem like it's impossible to get through. So there are a couple of powerful prayers that Muslims can recite from the Quran, one of them being Surah 2 verse 286. And this translates to, Impose not on us that which we have not the strength to bear. Grant us forgiveness and have mercy on us. You are our protector. Help us against those who deny the truth. So when Muslims recite these prayers, they are finding comfort by putting their faith in the Almighty Allah. So number six, we're going to be talking about a prayer for a good spouse or children. Especially during the time period we live in, everyone's so scared of getting divorces or ending up with the wrong person. In the Quran, Surah 25 verse 74, it says, Grant that our spouses and our offsprings be a comfort to our eyes and give us the grace to lead those who are conscious of you. This prayer or dua is recited on a continuous basis to find the righteous spouse. And, and people who are already married can still use this dua to improve their conditions of themselves and their spouses. So on number five, we have a prayer for purification. So especially during the world that we live in right now, we are surrounded by things like vulgarity and sexual temptations. So in the Quran Surah 3 verse 193, it says, forgive us our sins and erase our bad deeds and take our souls in the company of the righteous. So this dua is asking Allah to make you pure that will help you eradicate those useless thoughts or those evil thoughts that are coming into your head. This way, this can be recited over and over to help keep your mind as pure as possible. So next up on number four is a prayer seeking forgiveness. At the end of the day, human beings are responsible for their own deeds, whether they're good or bad. People can be really careful about things and still make mistakes. There are many prayers regarding forgiveness, but this is the one very powerful prayer that I found, which was in the Quran, Surah 21, verse 87 and this translates to there are none worthy of worships beside you glorified are you surely i am from the wrongdoers this prayer is not just powerful but it's actually really special because during the time of prophet yunus when he was trapped in the stomach of a whale in the quran it says that he was relieved of his burden because he would recite this specific prayer so on number three we have a prayer for receiving blessings from allah so one of the most simple but powerful prayers for muslims is bismillah Rahman Rahim. So which means I begin with the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. So this prayer is repeated multiple times in the Quran and Muslims say this prayer almost every day while doing pretty much anything, whether it's riding a bike to traveling across the world. And this is because doing anything with the name of Allah is considered to be a blessing in whatever they do. Even if someone has everything they want in life, they can still recite this prayer to have that continuous blessing for health, safety, or literally anything else. And number two, we have a dua for safety and security. So living in a world where any tragedy can happen at any time, Muslims pray so they can be protected from the tragedy that this world has to offer. A prayer that ensures safety and protection from all misery is the Aytul Kursi. So the Aytul Kursi is Surah 2 verse 255 in the Quran. So this 
prayer is so powerful that if it is recited three times, it is believed that the Almighty Allah will tell his angels to not worry and the Almighty Allah will take care of the person himself. So what makes this prayer so amazing is that it can be used in almost any situation. If someone's waking up from nightmares or being afraid of an unfortunate event that's coming their way, it is believed that reciting this prayer will help them feel calm and protected and will give them the strength to continue. So on number one, we're going to be talking about a prayer for afterlife. So Muslims believe in Akhirah, which is a term in Islam to describe the belief in the afterlife. So for Muslims, it is believed that life on earth is just a test. At the end of the day, we are humans and some of us might make mistakes here or there. Everyone who believes in the afterlife obviously would want to go to paradise. So there is a prayer or dua that Muslims can use to keep them on track towards paradise. In the Quran, Surah 2 verse 201, it says, Grant us good in this world and good in the life to come and keep us safe from the torment of the fire. So there are many prayers that Muslims make for the life they have on earth, such as praying for a nice car, a beautiful spouse, wealth, children but what makes this prayer so powerful is that it's not just asking for a good life on earth it's also asking for a good life in the afterlife so life is supposed to be good in paradise but in a way this prayer is asking to save a portion of paradise for you